Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 213, most of the way through May. Uh, Memorial Day for those of you that are in the States coming up. Enjoy your long weekend, all that good stuff. As always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, if you're here, say hi. Um, Jacob jumped in early, but always willing to say hi. Uh, what are we doing today? We are going to do triage, like we always do. Then we're going to talk about Preview Zero status. Um, and then we will talk about the agenda for Preview One going forward. And then we'll do the usual thing of questions and comments. So uh, nothing too surprising, I hope, here. Let's go ahead and get our way through triage, and we'll talk about the, the cool Wix 4 stuff. Bob, are you ready? I am ready. Yay. All right. Um, first issue is yours. Well, if you count from the top. I do count from the top. <laughs> oh, well, in that case. Um, yeah, uh, yes, yes. All right. Push that I out. So. Um, the NetFX net framework package definitions are failing signature verification. Um, oh, I left this off. This is going to turn into a topic that we need to drill into. Um, and we have another thing down here to talk about it. Um, at this point, it. I don't have a solid answer why, but it does not look like Microsoft's going to change their mind. So we're just going to have to roll through this breaking change um, and where it goes from here. Um, I don't, I don't have answers to this other than uh, I guess we're just going to update and still have the debate about signature verification and all that kind of stuff, um, which is six four four seven. Wow, there are three of these here. Yeah. So, not just, uh, not just one. Yeah, not just one. I forgot. All right. So we have that. That about bringing the authentic code signature feature back to handle the case when Microsoft changes the executable behind the URL um, in a way that at least doesn't shake, break the signature, um, which of course is what they did in six four three eight, and then six four six two is where. Uh, an option to make it easier to swap out or specify your own download location for the package for the NetFX package itself and the complications that go along with that. So um, all of this I think turns into a big topic for us to discuss. Do we want to keep these things as triage or do you just want to put them in 4.0 and make them one of the discussion items? Uh, I don't know what that means, make it a discussion item. Uh, so I maintain a list of things that need higher level discussion. Uh, most of those usually have bug numbers associated with them. Not all of them do. I'm going through and getting them to have bug numbers so that we can talk and then sort out the bigger dis decisions. So these three could be grouped into a, let's talk about what we're going to do around authentic code signatures and the challenges that .NET Framework exposed um, due to 6438 and the all out from here because I think we need to talk I, about these things yeah. as a holistic all right sure sure as a holistic thing so I think we need to do that come back because I, I had hopes that Microsoft would be like oh yeah yeah no 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 but they're not um, oh no they're they're doubling down they're yeah. embracing it yes yeah, so and it's uh, not just NetFX by the way no um, it, clearly Microsoft intends to or well they really want to be able to update redistributables, and they fully intend to swap out yes. the target of a URL. So, All right. So let's bring all these together into a discussion. I should have put it on the design discussion. Um, so we will uh, bring all these back into a design discussion and have that. Um, so I think the triage can come off of these, and I will um, tag them all together under that design discussion that we will have. Non-permanent XE packages should require detect condition. And this goes with packages should be consistent about being uninstallable and repairable. Um, I thought you had already implemented this and so, you just haven't pushed it. Yeah, I, I have an implementation on it, and I'm not happy with the um, error message because it's pointing at 
this problem here, the XE package should be consistent with uninstallable and repairable. And so I actually have this change in the old repos <laughs> that I just stashed there and I was going to bring back going forward. So um, I, this is mine. Yeah, you can give this to me. Um, and I will, this one I will solve. All right. I'm, I'm hesitating because of this one here. Um, well, people agree. Blair, oh yeah, right, this one. Yes. Um, so this is all about, yeah, you need to detect condition to know if a pack, package is present. So to uninstall it, you need to detect condition. If the package is permanent, then presumably you don't need to detect whether it was there unless you want to skip it on install, which is on a, on a subsequent install. Um, or you want to be able to repair. So the, the logic of this is a little bit more complicated. But I, this one I want to talk about, um, the repair arguments being blank is how you say that to do a repair, this XE requires a repair, and to do a repair you don't have to pass any arguments, you say repair arguments equals blank. And Sean always has to remind me that Uninstall arguments are always or uh, XE is always uninstallable. Um, even if it has no uninstall arguments, it'll just pass blank to uninstall the XE unless the XE is permanent. So this issue brings up the things like, well, why don't we make them the same? If you want to be uninstallable, then you have to say uninstall arguments equals blank. Or I guess we could say we don't have to specify repair arguments, and we always repair, although repairing XE packages is challenging and generally falling out of favor, I think. Um, so if we did the uninstall arguments equals blank to be the same as repair arguments um, equals blank, then permanent is redundant, right? Because if you don't have uninstall arguments attribute at all, then that means the XE package is permanent. There's actually a force uninstall that the BA can ask for to override permanent. Right. So you're saying if, okay, so on that line, if there were no uninstall arguments, even forcing wouldn't uninstall it then? Because we wouldn't know how? Yeah. And overloading the arguments attributes is horrendously undiscoverable. Yeah, well, and all the other XE, all the other, all the other packages have permanent on them, so it would be the weird one. You're like, oh, I want to make sexy permanent, so I say permanent equals yes, right? No, and you'd have to do it differently. So it'd be inconsistent, which you know we've done that before, but uh, not the best place to start. So going through what you said about the force, so permanent <laughs> means permanent unless forced. Um, and uninstall arguments that's, is necessary for it to be uninstallable at all. If you say, you know, permanent, permanent equals yes is the same as uninstallable equals yes. And if you don't write uninstall arguments, then force isn't going to do any good anyway. Right. So not it specifying could do permanent equals yes and specify uninstall arguments for the force case. If you wanted force to work. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Do you know if anyone's using force? It came from Visual Studio, so I don't know anymore. Um, It's still a uh, still interesting. The uninstall arguments being blank, and then us uninstalling anyway. I guess we. 
it could be also that if the XE package is not permanent, then you have to specify uninstall arguments, um, including blank. Yeah. If your XE some ta somehow is uninstallable by blank, it, it just seems so unlikely that you that an XE uninstalls with no args by default. Essentially, it says run this XE that'll install it. If it's already installed, run this XE and it will uninstall it. <laughs> like really, that seems highly unlikely that anybody would ever do that. Um, Agreed. Of course, it's famous last words, but um, we should support it, which we already do. Right. So if a XE package is not permanent, we could say that you need uninstall arguments. Yes. Yeah. And it can be blank. And they could be blank. Is that the way to go? Same thing with repair. Yes. So you want to add an attribute to say if something's repairable, repairable or not? If you don't set that attribute and you set repair arguments, then it, uh, then it errors. Okay. I, supp I suppose I was looking for symmetry in the operations. Um, I know, <laughs> but yeah, permanent does not mean uninstallable. It's not. It does not exactly mean uninstallable. Well, no. It means leave it, leave right. it alone. It means I don't control the lifetime of this thing. At least and force was basically a way of uh, BAs can only influence the final, you know, action state of a package. Mm -hmm. you know, and force was one of those things that's like, well, I want more influence than you're giving me today. Mm -hmm. um, which also leads into repair versus mend. Um, I suppose the presence of we don't. There's no such thing as a force repair. Um, no. So I suppose we could rely on the presence of repair arguments. Um, right now, though, I believe I believe does repair run and install. If there are no repair arguments, no, it skips it, right? Okay, right, Sean, is that right? Well, what was uh, what's if the question? There are, if there are no repair arguments, does the XE get skipped during a repair operation? Uh, if it's not present, it'll install it. Yeah. Well, yes, yes, but if it's present, if it's installed. There's no. It's a no op on repair. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. It's not symmetrical, but what you're going to do. So the change here then is to say it's not about being consistent between uninstallable and repairable. Um, it's about um, if you are not permanent, then you need to give us uninstall arguments because we're going to try to uninstall it. And rather than silently use blank, we want you to tell us that you explicitly need to use blank because we think it's so unlikely that you meant blank. Right? Yeah. So if you if you want to specify that your package is not uninstallable, you're going to have to say permanent equals yes and not specify uninstall arguments. Yes. So if you say, yeah, if you're not permanent, you're going to have to put uninstall arguments on there, even if it's blank. <laughs> um, so what we're probably catching is a mistake in the end, right? Either you meant for it to be permanent and you didn't give an uninstall arguments, or you meant for it to be uninstallable and you probably meant arguments. And the whatever percentage of people that actually meant thought, um, that you have an uninstall with no arguments. That just, I'm trying to come up with a case where that works, but yeah. I guess you could have an XE utility that runs during uninstall that takes no arguments. It just always runs. 
I mean, you could make the install take arguments, and then the uninstall be no arguments. I mean, yes, you could. I'm, and, and it would probably be no, a utility. No one has but ever nobody done does that. that. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, yes, you could, but nobody does that. So, and it's, but as long as we support blank, we're fine. Do any damn weird thing you want to, or can handle it. We're this isn't so much you know the this is the, isn't the runtime. This is this is all language talk, right? Um, there there was not a concept that the package was not uninstallable before. So there will be burn changes for this. Oh, so, sorry, sorry. I uh, the execution of the package. Wait, yeah, once you've about... planned it, the execution of it won't change. What's the change in burn? Well, it's going to be like repair, where if it's present and you do an uninstall, or if the, if the request state is absent and it's present, it's not going to uninstall it ever. Um, oh, even on the force case. Right. But in that case, permanent would have to be yes. So that's already. Yeah, no, but it, it's the force case, right? So if you said permanent. So if you force a XE package today. It will uninstall. Let's say you had an XE package with no uninstall arguments. You marked it permanent, thinking it will never get removed, and then it got forced. It would actually be run with no arguments today. Right. Yeah. That that seems like a bug oh, anyway. That, yeah. That's wacky. Yeah. Yeah. That seems probably like we don't want to allow that. So yeah, that sounds like a good burn fix anyway. <laughs> that's like, no, no, no. I really, really want you to uninstall. And <laughs> package goes, all right, I'll install myself. Yeah, right. Or whatever happens when it's already present and and yeah. running it again. Yeah, okay. Yes, I agree. I, I think that's probably we should probably do that in burn anyway. So I think that's the change is yeah. Okay. I think that's probably right. That's probably the right state to end up in for all that. All right. Who's taking this? Um, this is split across Sean and I again. I, I'll do the, the, I mean, unless Sean wants to do the compiler side, I'm happy to do the compiler side for this again because it ties in with my permanent on the detect condition um, thing that I just have to pull up and put in there. And then I will do the same thing for the repair arguments, the uninstall arguments to be the same as repair arguments and be nullable or, or not present. Um, I'm happy to do that part. Um, yeah. All right, you're both getting the book. Yeah. Oh, I guess, so. hey, it can be assigned to both of us, can't it? Yes, it can. Hey, that's that's nice. That'll work. And then Sean or I will remove ourselves, whoever is left holding the bag, which is going to be me, because this is not the highest priority thing. Holding holding the bag. The bug. Did I say bag? Yeah, holding the bug. Um, hop it, hop it. Okay. Um, these next two were uh, fallout from the new build that were not resolved before preview zero. So you can give both of these to me, and I will get them fixed. I um, haven't decided which way to fix them, but we'll go and fix them to not end up with duplicate native binaries in the packages and not end up with PDBs in the wrong places, so in the wrong packages. And then we're going to tie this this last one in with all of the other things about how to handle the fact that um, basically how to handle X is changing on the um, server. In a non, in a backwards compatible way, or handle it. Period. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That actually was better than I thought it was going to be. Wix four preview zero status. I should have put this at the top, but the big bullet is the second one we released last Monday. 
Yay, it was later than hoped, took a little bit longer than hoped, but um, it is done. It was fantastic. The XE is up. The extensions took a little bit longer than May 17th to get up there, but the ball extension, NetFX extension, UI, and util extensions are all up there, um, up there being NuGet.org and can be used. Um, and the V3 to V4 source code is in there, and you can build MSIs, MSMs, and bundles um, using this set of stuff that we've provided. The end result of all of that is it's been really quiet, <laughs> which is which is fine. Um, the the if we look here, uh, we will see that there's been 101 downloads of Preview Zero. Um, and I'd be like, oh, that's that's pretty interesting. People came up here and tried it out. A hundred people tried it out. Ah, that might be a thing. Except that if we go and look at one of the Wix extensions, um, for which there hasn't been any real discussion about how to use it, there have been 93 downloads. <laughs> which means I think we're getting a count of some automated systems that are downloading these and just doing stuff. Or people are randomly downloading these but have no real idea how to use them or um, intent to use them. Certainly can't like reference this as a you know standard NuGet package and have it do anything because it's intended to be used by the Wix tool set. So um, anyway, this is not completely surprising given the size of it. Um, a lot of Preview Zero was a good forcing function to get the whole, pro a lot of the processes, a lot of these things in place. Um, and so it's good to have Preview Zero up and out there. So. I don't have a lot more to say because it has been quiet. What we now need to talk about, because Preview Zero is always kind of a here, this is a baseline, let's get this, let's show some progress. What we really need to get working is um, all the other things uh, that were punted to Preview One, um, namely these uh, last two bullets here. Well, the last three bullets are all interesting. Um, the documentation, the MS build, um, integration and the, well, patches are probably less important, but the documentation and MS build. So I'm doing work on documentation right now and have a bunch of changes on my laptop as I've been doing work here and there. And I will push those in the next day or so for my changes and other people can keep joining in and doing more of them. Um, there's plenty and plenty and plenty of documentation to do there. Um, and then of course the MS build work I'm very excited to get started as soon as I get caught up on my other work that I had put down while doing focus so much on Wix 4. Patches will come after that. Bugs. I put them first, put this alphabetical order. Bugs are the interesting thing. We have about 110 of them. Jump over and kind of see them. There's a, yeah, 110 of them-ish. It says 108. We'll get a couple more with those other ones. In fact, if I refresh, they might already be here. Oh, 115. Um, so, all right, less than 120. We, as Bob reminded me, we punted a lot of stuff, or punted, we we sent a lot of stuff in the V3 triage as, a, well, that's a breaking change. We'll put it in 4, and we put it in 4.0. So I think we probably need to go through and triage these 115 as the, are these in, out, things like that. Do you guys agree on that, that we need to get, at least do a once over on them? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, right. So it's it's five pages worth. I don't know how long it's going to take you. I don't expect it's going to take. I expect we're going to fly through most of them, and then there'll probably just be a few that will end up being like, oh yes, no, and then we'll discuss it a little bit. Um, so the other thing, well, so the, the choices are are really yes, this is something that we must get into four O. This is something that could go into four X, or this is another breaking change, or this is a breaking change, as you mentioned we did a lot of that yep. uh, and therefore needs to go into you know, Wix 5. I, I'm not going to say we can't do any breaking changes in Preview 1. Like we, The goal was to get a Sorry, lot of that no, in. Sorry, no, 4.0. I wasn't, I wasn't, oh. I was just talking 4.0, not even Preview. Right. Oh, you're saying I mean, breaking changes that, that we don't even want in 4.0. Or rather things that right. we want in 5. It's the other way to say it. Either. Vice versa, first vice or whatever. <laughs> right. Yes. Right. So, yes. 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 All right. I, so, we're going to need to spend some time on that 
And we also then have a few of these design discussions. One of them I need to add is the what are we doing about the authentic code, um, the, the changing exes on the servers that .NET Framework uh, has shown us with the change in the shell hash. Um, um, So should we just allot a certain amount of time to triage for the next couple weeks and then a couple meetings and then add one of these design discussions as well? Um, I guess that's kind of a, Sean, you have brought up most of these design discussions. So um, how many of these do you need to have discussed before or to keep you unblocked or in, uh, until you get blocked? Whichever way you want to look at that. Um, I'm not sure they're blocking me. Okay. All right. So that, that's, that's great. That means that we, we need to get them done, but we don't have to rush them. Um, so we go so at a certain point, it, they, they fall into the same category of, of, you know, are we going to do them? Yes. In 4.0? Is yes. this something we can defer to 4X or is this something that now needs to wait until the 5? Correct. Um, okay. I'm pretty sure none of these can go 4x, um, given right. the scale right. of the breakingness of them. So I, th I don't think 4x is going to be the option. It's kind of like, are we doing this at 4.0, or are we doing it later, or are we never doing this? I think that's really going to be the three options. It's not going to be a, are we going to do this in the future release of 4? But yes. Um, okay. So the design discussions will be triaging um, older issues. So. Where we're gonna, what things gonna look like for preview one going forward for the next few meetings, are we will do standard triage just to stay on top of the new incoming stuff. Um, predominantly looking for things in preview zero that are like, oh, hey, someone found a really good preview zero bug. Do we need to tackle that? I'm expecting not. I don't expect that to happen, but we'll stay on top of those issues. And then we will go. Um, we'll probably spend a block of time just continuing triage into the 4.0 issues, starting at the oldest, I think, working into the future um, or into the present, <laughs> as the case may be. Um, and we will check those off and they will either stay or fall to their appropriate uh, place. And then we will pick up, a, save a little time for design discussions, depending on how we feel about the issues and if we want to pick up something. Because at some point, we will hit these design discussions as later or more current of Wix 4 issues that are still open. So you know, we'll hit them one way or the other. So the next um, question I had from there that I forgot to write down is, do we want to think about 3x? Or how do we want to make think about three X issues? I thought I think we they, had it was a big bucket. Yes, it's a I, very big bucket. I thought bucket. we had some kind of respawn plan. Right? Yes. But I don't think we've ever gone through and actually like said we we haven't gone through the old three X stuff and said, Yes, we'll actually keep this, we'll kill it, or we'll just carry it forward. Um I I thought the plan was if no one's commented on it in a certain amount of time, it's going to automatically be closed. Automatically get pushed out? I, I thought that's what we talked about. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably... Yeah, that's probably the way to do it. And then I think we probably can toss 4x into that same bucket. Right? Because there's probably some very old 4x stuff in there as well. That have just been hanging out forever. I, I don't. I'm, I'm those sure might that's... be more interesting to talk about. Maybe. I don't remember what made us decide to throw it in four X. Uh, breaking change that was not end up in four O. We got kind of wishy washy about it. No, if it was breaking, I, I went to 4.0. Yeah, I think these were, I, I think we started using 4x more as 3x wind, wound down. Yeah. Um, so it, it's like, it's not breaking, it doesn't have, so it doesn't have to be in 4.0, but it's not going to be in 3x. So I agree with Sean, it's, they're probably more interesting. Well, it's, it's probably 50-50. Some of them yeah. are you know, might be interesting. 
2013. They're probably Thanks. newer, which I think makes them more interesting than 3X. Yeah, right. 2014, 2013. Well, ish. Yeah. Well, there are only 166 of them. Um, I don't know if they'll be easy or hard, um, but yeah. All right. So we'll keep the labels separate. I won't think about merging them. And we will have to think about how we want to tackle uh, 4X stuff. But clearly the focus are the things that are in 4O right now that we're like, yeah, these were put here either because, yes, we definitely need to do that, or, uh, yeah, you know, this was kind of thrown over. Let's let's push it into presumably 4X or wherever. So that's all. Yeah, I, it, it, I don't know if we – maybe we should talk about this before we do that first triage because the way we got into the, the – the bucket of, you know, big, huge buckets of bugs, of issues that, you know, a, a certain percentage of which that could vary from 20 to 50 um, are things that just are never going to happen. They're, they're interesting, but mm -hmm. they're not, you know, no one's shown any interest. Mm -hmm. We talked about respawn as, as I think the way to deal with the, the long tail of them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think as we start talking about, you know, going through 4.0 and then 4X triage sessions, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm asking, no, I'm suggesting that we should probably have a plan in mind for that kind of thing. That's just like, yeah, that's interesting, but maybe that's interesting, but yeah. You know, triage team is like going, yeah, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, like, or just in general, it's like th this is maybe the or or frankly, this isn't interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So that we don't get into this habit of of yeah again how we ended up with I don't know there's like 600 three X bugs. Five hundred and five. Eh, not bad for a guess. And there are 166 4x. Counting the 40, that brings us up to around 300. Four, um, four, four. Yeah. 275. Sure. Okay. Yeah. 300. Yep. 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 So 300, and then 500 is. <laughs> Some of these are ancient too, like splash screens appears too late. Like just looking at some of these, like yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. I'm actually gonna do that one. The O U R <laughs> splash screen appears too late. Well, there you go. Um, burn show files in use on Windows XP. Yeah, that's gone. Yeah. Okay. Hyphen Unicode hyphen not accepted. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. I don't. I can't stand. I can't look at these anymore. Um, all right. So we are definitely going through 4.0, and then we'll see how we're progressing on actually fixing the bugs. That's another big thing to be doing, as well. Oh right. Um, yeah. We can't just push them around in circles. They need to disappear. Um, and if that's triaging them away, then that's great. But we can't triage away things that need to be fixed. So. I think that's going to be um, a lot of the work going forward. And yeah, we'll use suspend a lot in that 3x for sure, 4x probably, 4.0 uh, sparingly, I expect, is what we're going to find. Um, but yeah. All right. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing in these meetings for preview one is walking through issues. <laughs> So it's going to be maybe we should take bets about how how the these numbers are going to end up. You mean well, well, four is going to end up at zero. I'll take that bet. Well, <laughs> I meant uh, the triage effort. The triage, the triage effort. effort. How you mean? How many are we going to like just toss versus how many we're going to keep? Or yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, like you know we have a betting pool for the number of suspend items, and I mean I suppose it's probably not a good idea since you know, we're the ones who aren't yeah, going to spend. Exactly. <laughs> if I can't win any money from it, then never mind. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, 
so the meetings are going to be a lot about, at least for the next couple, we'll see how quickly we go. Um, I mean, it's entirely possible we could blow through, you know, 75 issues in a meeting without too much problem um, of the 4.0 type, because I think we're going to be like, yep, 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 and then then we'll get stuck. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not nearly that optimistic. No. Just because I think we we, sh we were very liberal in, in moving stuff to 4.0 because it was a breaking change, not because it was necessarily a you know, good idea. Um, maybe. maybe. I, I think we're going to say yes or no to things pretty quickly in 4.0. There's only, only five pages worth of issues to get through, so um, I don't know. We'll see. Well, but again, the question isn't yes, no. It's, you know, yes, later, never. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Later v never is tougher, I think. Mm, yeah, maybe. I think it's going to be a whole lot of later because we kept them this long, and then a few. Oh yeah, why is this here? I'm gone. But yeah, I hear you. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing for the next couple of weeks. Anything else people want to talk about that's going on out there? Um, stuff, things, um, other items of interest, um, documentation will need a lot of work, but that's coming. Um, I already talked about that. It's bugs. It's bugs. It's bugs. It's bugs. It's bugs. That's where the world, that's what we need to be doing is uh, fixing all the, fixing the bugs, fixing the features. All right. I tried to fill a lot of space, not getting any questions. I think it's pretty clear where we're going. Um, and, uh, we will be back, I think in two weeks, shouldn't be any problem. I, I don't think we need to hurry up into the triage because we all have things that we've, you know, like, yeah, preview zero went out. Yay. Preview one has a bunch of things that we know we want to get done. So that says June 10th, um, same time, same place. Uh, we'll do that June 10th. And uh, I, it'll be a whole lot of time staring at uh, issues. Yay? I don't know. The nice thing about issues is that you can check them off as you get, you know, progress through them. Um, there's something to that. All right. Since it's quiet out there, we're going to call it a day. You guys all have a wonderful time. Preview Zero is out there. Play with it. Go kick it around. See how it works for you. Um, try to convert some of your code. That is actually a, a very interesting thing that we'd love to get feedback on if your code converts um, or doesn't or crashes and things like that, especially in conversion. We'd like to get those solved at any time because the world is big and plenty of opportunities. So have fun, Wix 4, Preview 0. We'll be back in two weeks to start triaging our way through all Preview 1 work. Until then, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.